I love this next story because this may tell you a little something about the nature of animals. And when I say animals, I mean all animals, including human beings. In Queensland, Australia, the cane toad was introduced around 1935 to control the beetle population. So that uh, particular beetle was getting out of control and they were reproducing and it was causing problems. So uh, they learned that these cane toads eat them and control the population, so they brought them on in. And what the toad does, other than control the beetle population, is it excretes a toxin in its sweat, which is poisonous to many animals. So in recent days, there's been an epidemic of dogs licking the toads and then overdosing. There's salivation, shaking, vomiting, and even death that occur as a side effect of uh, licking these toads. But what they found is that even if a dog did it and they went to the vet and they survived because they got the medicine that they needed to make it through, uh, the dogs would keep doing it. Even after they learned the consequences that this might lead to vomiting, shaking, and even death, they continued to do it. So then, of course, the question becomes, why are they doing it? Well, according to the Queensland Cairns Veterinary Clinic, they wrote a post about this, and they said, quote, some dogs even seem to become addicted to the high from the toads. So the speculation now is that the dogs get to hallucinate when they lick the toads, and they like it. So they'll risk their lives just to get that high. And they say uh, the evidence of this also is that when they bring the dogs into the vet's office uh, after they got sick from uh, licking the toads, the way that the dogs look around, they could tell that it's very similar to how a human being would act when they're hallucinating. So you think you see things that you're not seeing, you got like rapid eye movement and whatnot, following things in the room, sometimes staring off into oblivion. And they say, look, these are signs. This is evidence that the dogs are actually high. Now, I can't get enough of this story, and I love it to death. Because one of the arguments that conservatives always make, whenever they're, you know, just being a buzzkill, and they're against, oh, yeah, drinking is bad, you know, kids in college don't do it, or, uh, oh, marijuana is evil, keep it, keep it illegal, et cetera, et cetera. They always argue, well, it, it's unnatural. It's just not right. You're supposed to be sober. You're supposed to keep your nose to the grindstone. You're supposed to wake up every day, eat shit, go to school, go home, go to sleep, repeat that until you die, except replace school with work. That's life. Sorry, get used to it. It's fine. But uh, what this shows you is that, in fact, if we define natural as what it is, things that occur in nature, animals all over the place are getting high. So there's an argument to be made that getting high is natural. Getting high is the normal thing to do. Because, again, and it's not just human beings who do it, and we've done it throughout all human history, whether, you know, you go back to uh, primitive man and Neanderthal days or whatever it was, when they pick berries, eat certain berries to try to get high, when you move on to uh, Native Americans here in the U.S. who would smoke peyote and do it on a regular basis, it was a community activity where they'd all gather around the fire and do it, uh, whether you go to current day America where we do nothing but smoke uh, I'm sorry, drink alcohol and smoke tobacco. Now tobacco is dying off, but it's just pretty much we're in an alcohol culture. You go to other cultures, they smoke uh, weed all day. And again, it just it varies place by place, but there's an argument to be made that this is actually what is natural, that it's not normal to be or natural to be sober all the time. You have to, you know, at times deviate from that and experience, uh, you know, play around with your brain chemistry. You don't do it to the point where you kill yourself, which of course is the concern and the dog might Dogs might not realize it could go that far. But within, you know, a, a certain spectrum, within a certain framework of reason, you can, yeah, experiment, do all those things. And the dogs are showing us that we're not the only ones who do it. They do it too.